Hello, I hope everyone is well in the midst of all this craziness. Um, my name is Mandela Masani, and you have tuned in to the Know Thyself Workshop. Usually, I like to start off with some music as people will come into the classroom, but we're going to do it virtually. So I have some vibe. This one in the background. If you're sitting that intention and being, being intentional about you and where you are in the space and letting all anxiety go, all stress go, anything that you're worried about, anything that you're upset about, just letting it, letting it rest for right now. And just uh, getting into the vibes of the music and just hearing the beat. As we uh, get ready to dive on in, just want to share a little bit about myself. Um, the intersection of music, healing, and entrepreneurship has always been a focus for myself. Uh, I was born in San Francisco, California, raised in Oakland. I'm a multifaceted singer, songwriter, actor, model, artist, and mentor. I'm using my life experiences to create a world of mentally stable and financially sound artists who work, heal, and create together. In 2015, NEX Means, uh, the collective was created by myself. Um, I wanted to give youth of all identities the tools to be proactive and productive about their life, mental health, and their artistry. Since 2008, I have facilitated and hosted restorative justice and mindfulness workshops for young people at YR Media, uh, Clackamas High School, Arts and Technology High School, and Open School, and Literary, uh, literary Arts in Open. This is some few things that I've done with this workshop. Uh, now I'm going to perform a piece for y'all. I'm going to perform a piece for y'all. Um, this piece is called I Am Okay. Um, I wrote this piece as a way to affirm myself uh, being that I am a queer black man, also a father, also an artist, and just standing in my truth. And uh, this piece came from just that. So here it goes. I am a father. I am beautiful. I am loved. I am an artist. I am queer. I'm the vision of a young boy that did not stop believing. I am my ancestors' prayers. I am walking in my purpose. I am healing. Yes, I am healing. I am somebody's baby. And I, I am okay. Now, I am okay is an affirmation, you know, of whatever it is to lift you up, to continue to remind yourself that I'm okay. Um, an, intentional af an intentional affirmation. Being intentional and setting the tone is very important. So I have listed out some agreements that I would like to share just to help us set the tone, to set the space. Um, respecting yourself, respecting everyone's identity, and respecting the space. So wherever you are right now, that is your sacred space. And know that you're safe within that space. So now just diving on in. Welcome to the Know Yourself workshop. Our first check-in question, and I'm going to give you all five minutes to answer this question, to write about it. Who am I and what makes me special? I'll give you all five minutes to write that out. Feel free to free yourself in the pages. There is no wrong answer. Who you are right now is who you're meant to be. There's nothing that you need in this moment. 
because of this moment, you're perfect. So I'm gonna give you uh, five minutes to start writing on who am I and what makes me special. And it could be anything. It could be something that you do for yourself. It could be a compliment that you have, have gotten. It could be a realization. Can I get a five minute timer? And feel free to release. We want to hear that a lot. Release, but don't relive. Whatever moment was traumatic for you or, you know, if it was hurtful, just know that in this moment, you have all you need. So while that's going, I'm going to go back to playing this song. Keep in mind, there's no wrong answer. This is about you. Who am I speaking your truth? Feel free to really just think about what is it that makes me special? Because it takes each one of us to make this whole thing all life work. So you are important to the story too. these next couple of minutes that you know really think and we dive into ourselves about what makes me special. couple of minutes hope everybody was able to find something even more beautiful and inspirational about themselves I'm gonna play this piece by a sister named Kiara Robinson talking about her own self-love journey and story. Growing up, I hated my natural curly kinky hair. I remember asking God to give me longer, straighter hair. I'm Kiara Roberson with a commentary from YR Media. Throughout elementary school, my mom always kept my hair braided with extensions. She thought it was the easiest way to keep my hair looking nice. But eventually, it got so expensive that she stopped paying for it. In middle school, I walked in with my natural hair. I thought my hair is crazy nappy. I was already self-conscious, but then my friends started asking where my braids went. Their questions made me even more insecure. One day, I read a book about self-worth and becoming a better me. It helped me learn to love myself, and I thought my hair would be a good first step. I reached out to my aunt for tips about natural hair care. She helped me find products and styles that worked for me. I started wearing twist outs and braided ponytails and started loving my hair the way it naturally grew. Kinky, curly, beautiful, and all mine. For YR Media, I'm Kiara Roberson. So I shared this video to show that we all 
go through things that can bring us down. And finding that love for yourself is a true journey of life. No matter what it is, whether it's your hair, um, your own personal being, your identity, is finding that love for self is very, very key and very, very important on your journey. And with these pieces, like the first piece that we did, that we wrote about, is what makes me special. And that was kind of a trick question to be like, what do I know about me? Because the more I know about me, the more of a light that I can be. Because this world is not gonna allow you to fully be secure in yourself. They actually want you to be insecure. So in that comes our next writing prompt, a love letter to yourself. And only you know what you've been through. Only you can really just say, self, thank you, or self, I want to make better, or self, this is what I'm finding out about you. And I want you to really use words to describe yourself standing in your own amazing truth. So no matter what your parents are saying, no matter what your school is saying, no matter what your partner or relationship is saying, write out how you feel about you. Because that is what's most important. And I have a quote. Make sure you don't start seeing yourself through the eyes of those who don't value you. Know your own worth, even if they don't. So with this piece, I want to give you five minutes to write. Write from your own heart about you. And I really, again, want you to free yourself from the pages to get lost in your own truth and to know that in this moment, you have all that you need. So again, in this love letter to self, I'll give you, again, five minutes. Let me get a timer for five minutes. Your timer is set for five minutes. To go ahead and continue to write this love letter to yourself. And again, I'll play some vibes. Feel free to free yourself. Again, there's no wrong answer. This is your love letter to you. What, do you, what did you need on your worst day? Or even on your best day? To give you congratulations if you made it. This is a piece of your heart to your heart. yourself getting stuck. Take some time to just think. This being that has gotten you this far, that you go to sleep to, that you wake up to, that you see, that you feel, that you're a part of. What does it take to encourage your own self? You know, for me, I listen to a lot of affirmations. I listen to a lot of, a lot of positive music. 
just to set my intention, to set my vibration, to vibrate on a higher level. So what can help you vibrate on a higher level as you write this love letter to yourself? Next couple of minutes to get that thought, that period, that word, that metaphor, that explanation, that I am statement. You know that you're not lacking anything from this moment, that you are here because you're supposed to be, and that you have all you need. Take a few more minutes to wrap up what we just wrote. Feel it, resonate with it, resonate with it. All right. Now coming back. I hope everyone was able to really write something beautiful to themselves because that brings us into our next check-in prompt. What does speaking your truth mean to you? And take a moment, you know, let it move around your brain, let it feel on your heart. What does speaking my truth mean? Now, in the first piece that I did, the I am affirmations that was speaking my truth for me. I'm a father, I am beautiful, I am queer, I'm loved. That is all I am statements of signifying that I am these things. No matter what you say to me, no matter what you call me, no matter what the world says to me, I am still these things. And that is speaking my truth. So who are you? All these questions were intentional. What makes me beautiful? What makes me special? Okay, well, I'm a father, that makes me beautiful, that makes me special, and I am loved. I'm saying that with my own mouth. There is power and intention in your own words to be able to say these things for yourself. So continue to think about that. I'm going to play a clip of a poet. Um, her name is Jasmine Mans, and the piece that she is doing is called I'll Whisper You Home. And the reason I really like this piece because it is showing a lot of her, her own personal truth, but also her ancestral and cultural truth. Excuse me. Stumbling upstairs upon the road with no proof that it's gone. I 
could hear it. When we applauded your name, could you hear it? When you were drowning, could you hear it? Bar traffic didn't want to remind us that the clock strikes 12. That, 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 we soon. That some girls really end up naked in their clothes. Close on a high note. That you can find a the end of quick fix on the same street in the bricks if you do Run your own. Secrets to the grave yet to make a flower blossom right out of cover. No holding a baby back into a soil. So, a black girl with faith is blind as the wind yet as real as it was forcing us. So, I played that poem. It's a very heartfelt, very, very heartfelt poem. It's a spoken word piece, a performative spoken word piece. And I wanted to play that to bring attention to not only is she telling her story and performing her story, but she's also speaking her truth. And that segues us into things you can things you should consider consider when performing from the performance and the performance that you saw before that what you see what you feel what you hear your voice your pitch even your breath your stage presence again your intention your stance and belief in yourself. And I said this already before, release, do not relive. So even though this poem was about her culture, young black women, the things that they've been through, the tragedies, it was still a, a call to action in her presence, her intentionality, her breath, her stance, even her pitch, telling the story, you know? The five most important elements of poetry is imagery. Painting that story, painting that picture. Rhythm. Even though it's not rhyming, there's a flow to it. There's a flow to her lines and phrases and how they connect to each one. That's important. I would, I would also say sound. There was also music. Like a lot of people don't think that just because it's spoken word, you can't have music. No, that help paints the picture and tell the story. So the vibrations of the musicians playing what they were playing, even though it was very simple, it still added to the story she was telling in her imagery. And density. how you swing your words, how you put your own little cadence on what you're saying. Which, what do you do with, with, with the spacing in between your words and your choice of words? And the line, what story are you telling? What's the beginning, what's the end, what's the middle part? You know, what's the feeling of it? And those are all the five elements of a really great piece. That should be on your, your spoken word checklist. And I want to thank you for being a part of still creating community, still making space, and still wanting to be a part of space, even in this virtual time. Because being able to write about yourself, to give yourself love, to even still have the intention to speak your own truth, even if you have to adapt to doing it in a different way, it's very important. And I hope that I've inspired you to really take your performances to the next level 
by being intentional, by thinking about all the things that you could do and not just reading it from a paper or memorizing it. Like your home is your stage. And I invite you to really feel safe in that space or make it safe for you to do just that and to be creative with it. Because this is you.